Hey, Omnibus Collectors, it's Riley, and I'm back with another haul video. Uh, as I mean, obviously, I'm doing this one in the POV style again. Uh, it's been a while since I did one of those, but uh, Megan, who is usually my camera person, is out of town for the weekend for a uh, bachelorette party. Uh, so, oh, Chewy is full of energy right now. Um, so, anyway. That said, I'm doing this POV style because I don't have her to hold the camera, and hopefully this works out okay. But anyway, uh, as you guys may know, if you don't already, go check out the last two videos that I posted. Uh, Megan and I, along with some of our family, went to the Dallas Fan Expo convention thingy-majigger. Uh, I posted a video, the first video I posted from there was of the Q&A session that Stan Lee did. That was a lot of fun. You can watch the entire thing. It's about 20 minutes of him talking about different stuff. Um, and then the second video, Megan edited, uh, edited together a bunch of little uh, segments of us going around the convention and stuff, you know, meeting different people and all that kind of stuff. So real quick at the beginning of this video, I'm just going to show you guys a few of the things, the non-comic related things that I did or got at the convention. Uh, so I've got the, these things all laid out on my uh, coffee table right now. The first thing is this print of uh, from uh, <clears throat> Neil Adams. You guys who watched my... Uh, my X-Men uh, readathon videos, you know that I'm a huge fan of the Neil Adams era, and I'm especially a huge fan of uh, the way that he designed Havoc's costume. It's one of my all-time favorite costumes, and with that, this is one of my all-time favorite covers. So it's the classic cover, um, you know, Enter the Man Called Havoc, and I, I had, uh, I purchased this print and got him to sign it for me and personalize it. It says, for Riley, signed by Neil Adams. Really awesome. Um, second time that I've met with Neil Adams. The first time, you can see it up there, I got, this is really out of focus, uh, that green, the green ant lantern green arrow print. Uh, that's also signed. That's the one with the uh, Speedy doing heroin on the cover. Uh, so this is my second Neil Adams print. Really excited about it, especially because this is like I said, one of my favorite covers of all time. And then I also got several dust jackets of some of my Omnis uh, signed by different artists who were there. I didn't want to bring the whole like book with me because that would be really heavy. So I just went ahead and brought uh, the dust jacket. So the first one up here, I've got uh, Bob Layton signed my, it's all glared because the light, signed my Iron Man omnibus, really awesome. Howard the Duck, signed by artist Val Mayrick. And then I got these two of the Ed Brubaker Captain America Omnis, signed by Steve Epting, since he is the artist on these. So, yeah. Death of Cap, and then Cap Volume 1. Got both of those signed by Epting. So that was really awesome. I really love meeting all these artists and stuff. So it was a really good time. Really enjoyed myself. Um, you can see... You know, when I was getting those signed in that video that I mentioned, uh, we inserted little segments of me just saying hi, shaking hands, and getting stuff signed. So it was a lot of fun. We are really excited for whenever the next convention that we get to go to is. Uh, so hopefully it's not too too far away because we had a really great time. Anyway, let's go right into the, uh, the haul part of stuff. I'll show off what I've got. Um, there's a bunch of different stuff from... A bunch of different places. Uh, I, I did a video previously and I talked about how there was like, I got stuff from Half Price Books, I got stuff from eBay, and I got stuff from In Stock Trades. This time I've got stuff from Half Price Books, I've got the stuff from the convention, I've got a couple things from eBay, and then I've got a bunch of stuff from In Stock Trades. So we're gonna start with what do I have first? Uh, the stuff that I grabbed off of eBay. So from eBay, I got a couple of books. The first one right here is Hulk Visionaries by Peter David, Volume 3. Uh, the third out of the eight volumes. Uh, as y'all might recall, I've been collecting these paperback volumes lately because Marvel announced the epic collection goes to the past. This one collects, as we can see here, I want to wait for this to... 349 through 354 and a couple of other issues. Uh, so there's a lot of cool material. I really like the cover to this one in particular. 
Uh, I'm still searching for volumes four and five, and then I just need to buy volume seven. That one's not going to be hard to get. Um, and then I'll have the entire collection. Just my goal is to have it, all these eight volumes and to read them before Ghosts of the Past comes out. That's, that's the goal. Uh, anyway, so really excited to have found that for a really good price online. And then the other one I have is this X-Men from the Ashes uh, paperback collection. This is a paperback collection of some older uh, Claremont stories that have not been collected across. Uh, these are post Omnibus Volume 2. So I went ahead and grabbed this book for a really cheap price. It is pretty worn. It's a reader copy, obviously. I'm, that's why I'm buying it, is so I can read it. But it's a reader copy of this storyline um, because I... If there is a collection of it, I would rather read it in the collection than to read it, like, on my computer screen. Because that's how I'm reading all the issues that are not collected. Um, I just, I like reading from the pages rather than from, you know, my computer. Saves... Save some strain on my eyes. But anyway, really excited to have this. Um, I'm going to be getting to these issues pretty soon, actually. I think within the next week or so. So a lot of cool stuff in there. All right, and the next lot of stuff that I have is from Half Price Books. I just have three books here. The first two that I have are these two X-Men uh, vignettes volumes. Volumes 1 and 2, titled Vignettes. Um, so basically what these are is back... Uh, a while back they did the X-Men Classic series, which was after the X-Men uh, by Claremont got really popular, they, uh, they did these classic reprints starting with Giant Size and going forward. And to give them a little bit more, I guess, reason for fans to pick those issues up, uh, you know, those who may have already read them, they added these backup features. The first 45 issues of this 100-something issue run featured backup features uh, written by Chris Claremont. And they had art by, uh, by John Bolton. So really great art within these. And so these two paperback volumes actually collect together the first 25 of those backup features with the art by John Bolton. And they each of these are relating to the actual material that was inside each of those issues. So the first one here should relate to uh, what was in Giant Size number one, and then so forth. So unfortunately, like I said, these collect issues, the backups from issues one through 25, uh, out of those 45 backups, and they never released like a volume three and volume four for the vignettes volumes. So these are the only collections there are, um, which is really, really unfortunate because I haven't read them yet, but they're really, really nice looking artwork on these stories. So I really would love to own all of them, but otherwise I'm just going to have to read those backup features uh, on my computer, which like I said, I'd rather not, but if that's the only choice, then I can't really do anything else about it. Um, hopefully these do get collected somewhere in an oversized hardcover, maybe in one of the future omnibus or maybe their own hardcover. It'd be really awesome if they did, but I'm not going to hold my breath about it until then. I've got these two paperback volumes uh, to hold me over. And then the third and final thing I got from Half Price Books is The Punisher Born. This is by Garth Ennis with uh, Derek Robertson. This is a four-issue, I believe, series that is kind of an origin story telling about Frank Castle in Vietnam. This is in the Max universe. Um, I'm working on collecting those Punisher Max oversized hardcovers, and I have this one in paperback, but I actually did not know that the hardcover collection was oversized. I thought it was standard size, but I was actually in half price today and saw this one there, and I was like, huh. I kind of need that so I can put it with my other ones because this will look really nice on the shelf with the other oversized uh, Punisher Max hardcovers. So I went ahead and I looked, just I always want to make sure, it was, uh, it was $9 and I wanted to make sure so I looked on Amazon to make sure if I could get it for cheaper. On Amazon the lowest price I found was like 50 or 60 bucks so I was like I am definitely picking this one up. This is a really nice find right there so I'm really excited about that one. Uh, like I said, I did have the paperback, or I do have the paperback. I just really like having this story in the oversized hardcover because it's a really good uh, story with really... All right, and this third chunk here that I've got is all the stuff that I bought at the convention. So there was this really awesome 
uh, stand out there, this uh, really awesome booth, I guess, called Torpedo Comics. It was a huge booth. They had a ton of stuff, a ton of paperbacks and a ton of hardcovers, and everything was 50% off. Uh, so we went in there, and Megan, who most of you all already know, my wife, um, she told me, so what we're going to do is at the convention, I'm going to give you this amount of money to spend uh, however you want, and that's going to be your birthday present. Because my birthday is in about a, it's actually a month from today. Uh, my birthday is July 4th. So she was like, I'm just going to give you your birthday present early, which is you getting to spend money at the convention, which is awesome. So that's, I bought that print. And then with the rest of the money, I bought a ton of collections, uh, a lot of stuff that was really awesome. Cause they had a lot of things that are, uh, kind of hard to find. Um, definitely things that are way worth it, uh, picking it up over there. I I'm really happy with what I found. Uh, but before I go into it, um, this first chunk that I'm going to be talking about from what I got there is something that you're going to cringe at. The remaining volumes of Chuck Austin's uh, Uncanny X-Men run. And I know this is the worst run on the X-Men period, but I'm a completionist and I'm working on collecting every, of, like, every issue of the Uncanny X-Men in Collected Edition. And this was just one of the pieces that I was like, I need to get this out of the way. And they had, I already have two of them, and they had the other four. And I got them for so cheap that I just, I couldn't, I couldn't not do it, you know. Um, but anyway, so I got this out of the way, and I never have to think about it again until I actually read them, and then I never have to think about it again. But it's, it's nice to have that complete set on the shelves. Um, anyone who is a completionist like I am knows what I mean. Uh, sometimes the, the quality of the book doesn't even matter when you know that you want to have all of that series on your shelf. Um, but anyway, so like I said, four volumes of this run. Uh, I got volumes one, two, five, and six. Volume one is titled Hope. Volume two is Dominant Species. Five is She Lies with Angels, and then six is Bright New Morning. So I'm glad to finally have all those out of the way. Um, I also got a couple of volumes of Uncanny X-Men The New Age by Chris Claremont. This is when Claremont returned to writing the series. This was post-Extreme um, X-Men, and then he jumped back on Uncanny X-Men for about 30 issues, and they called it The New Age, which is the subtitle here. And I already have Volume 1, uh, so I picked up Volumes, let's see, 3 and 5. That's On Ice is number 3, and then First Forsaken is Volume 5. So now I have to find uh, the other 3 out of, I believe it's 6 total, and then I'll have that entire chunk. And then that's a pretty good chunk of material right there that I'll have completely collected. Anyway, as you can see, I also grabbed a volume of New Mutants Classic. I've been saying that I'm pretty sure they'll wind up releasing an omnibus for New Mutants, especially since they just recently announced that there's going to be... I thought it was going to be a movie, but it's actually, uh, I've heard, going to be a TV show for the New Mutants. Um, so I doubt that Marvel's going to miss out on that opportunity and not collect a New Mutants omnibus. But just in case they don't wind up doing it, I went ahead and grabbed... This is volume 6 out of the 7 uh, classics paperbacks. Um, there are seven total, three of the six that I don't have, I know where to get for a good price. The other three I'm going to have to track down. Uh, so like I said, just in case they don't wind up releasing this as an omnibus, I will have the paperbacks. Um, I know that these are going for high prices, so you guys are going to have to wish me luck on my like hunt to find these. Anyway, so those are all the paperbacks I got. Now I've got some oversized hardcovers. The first one I've got here is The Fantastic Four by Mark Wade. This is volume three. You guys know, um, if you watch my other videos, I got the first one a while ago uh, at a Half Price Books location. The second one I found in Dallas for cover price, which is awesome because it usually goes for quite a bit above cover price online. And then uh, now I have the third and final one. So now I can read the entire uh, Fantastic Four by Mark Wade run in you know at my own pace, which is what I like to do. The next one I grabbed is Ultimate Spider-Man, the Oversized Hardcover Volume 4. This is the first oversized hardcover collection to follow the Omnibus. So in one of my 
uh, previous videos, I had grabbed volumes four through seven of the oversized hardcovers for New Avengers, and I mentioned that I was also going to be trying to do the same for Ultimate Spider-Man, track down all those oversized hardcovers. There's quite a bit more for Ultimate Spider-Man uh, than there were for the New Avengers, and they go for much higher prices, so I'm also going to need some luck with this one, guys, so wish me luck in finding volumes five through twelve. Uh, hopefully I can. Uh, even more hopefully, you know, I, I want them to release more Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus, but, you know, like I said, just in case it doesn't happen, I'll be prepared by having these books. And then the last thing that I picked up at the convention is another Punisher Max oversized hardcover. Uh, this is Volume 2. I've had Volume 1 for a while now, and I haven't picked up Volumes 2 and on. I know it's Volume 4, I believe, that's the really hard one to find. So again, wish me luck in finding that one. Um, but I decided, you know, I saw this one over there for 50% off. I couldn't pass it up. Um, and this buying this one also inspired me to buy that Punisher Born book. So hopefully I, I round out this collection Hopefully it doesn't take me terribly long to get it all. And this is another one that I do want to see collected in an omnibus. But again, just in case it doesn't happen, I'm going to try and track down all these oversized hardcovers. Because they are really nice looking volumes. I really dig the way they look. Uh, so that's everything that I got from the convention. Um, a lot of great stuff. I'm really thankful to my wife for giving me, you know, spending money for my birthday. Um, so that I could buy all this stuff because they had so much cool stuff. They're called, uh, again, Torpedo Comics. They do have a website um, where they sell their stuff, but the website is down at the moment, so I'm waiting for them to go back up because I'm sure there's more stuff I would want to grab in the future. All right, and my final chunk of goodies, my last stack of books, is going to be all my in-stock trade stuff that I've gotten for the past couple weeks. Uh, this is... it's. Really, it should have been one shipment, but I accidentally split it into two because I forgot to pick something up with one of the orders, and I picked it up in a... whatever. It doesn't matter. Anyway, this is, like, my most recent order from InStock Trades. So, as always, I'm starting from the smallest book and working my way up. So, here is... Ex Machina, this is the new paperback edition. Uh, this is Brian K. Vaughn's series, originally published by DC through their Wildstorm uh, imprint, but Wildstorm is now defunct, so they published it again through Vertigo. Originally, this was in 10 paperback editions, and they re-released it as five oversized hardcovers, but those oversized hardcovers, unsurprisingly, are out of print and very expensive, so they re-released as five nice-sized uh, paperback editions, and now I have all five of them, and just like I said with the Fantastic Four, now I can go ahead and read it all through at my own pace. So really excited to finally have this one. Uh, I'm sure it's a... I've heard a lot of great stuff, so I can't wait to sit down and read it. Next, I've got... The This is a Star Wars Legends epic uh, collection, The New Republic, Volume 1. So basically, ever since uh, Marvel, through Disney, retain, regained the rights to the Star Wars comics, uh, of course, they've been publishing the new stuff. There's Jason Aaron's ongoing series, the Darth Vader series by Kieran Gillen, um, and a bunch of other stuff happening right now, and then they are doing the uh, the Star Wars Omnibus volumes as well. But in addition to those, they are publishing these uh, epic collection paperbacks of the uh, Dark Horse material. So this is the second one that's been released. The first one was uh, the Empire Volume 1, and this is the New Republic Volume 1. They collect lots of different stuff. Um, let's see. There's Mara Jade, By the Emperor's Hand, 0 through 6, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, Evolution 1 through 5, Star Wars Jabba Tape, and Star Wars Boba Fett, Twin Engines of Destruction, and Material from Star Wars Tales 1, 3 through 5, 10, 14 through 15, 20, and 22. So a lot of cool stuff in here. Uh, this is stuff that I believe, yeah, it says up here, after the events of Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. Uh, so this is post original trilogy stories. This is the first in the line of the post-original trilogy stories published by Dark Horse. I know that these things are not technically in canon anymore, but I like to think of the Dark Horse stuff as like the ultimate Star Wars universe. I mean, they're, they're, own, or they're being published by Marvel now, so why not? Ultimate Star Wars comics. Um, I, I'm kidding. That's just a joke. I mean, you can use that if you want, but I'm just joking around. Anyway, nice looking collection. Can't wait to dig into it. And here I've got another epic collection. This is the Iron Man 
War Games Epic Collection. This collects the entire of the uh, the entirety of the John Byrne run on Iron Man. Really nice looking cover. Cool looking back cover. It's got some of my favorite armors. Um, this is leading. I believe this leads into the Len Kaminsky run, which is where they introduced like. A lot of the stuff that's popular, like War Machine, the Hulkbuster, uh, I believe that's where they introduced the modular armor, which is what the armor from the cartoon in the 90s was based on. Anyway, this collects issues 258 through 277. Like I said, it's the entirety of John Byrne's run collected in one volume. I was actually inspired to grab this. This, this did come out a while ago. Um, and I just, I missed out on it and I finally went ahead and grabbed it, but I was really inspired to because my brother-in-law um, texted me a picture of Iron Man riding a dragon. He was like, do you know where this is from? Because he always sends me stuff and he's like, ask me where it's from. And I always know. And I was like, I don't know the specific issues issue, but judging by the artwork, I would say it's probably from John Byrne's run. And he showed me the back of the paperback and it was the, I think it was the dragon seed saga is what it was called. And it was from John Byrne's run. So I was like, cool, I got it right, but I've never read that. So that's interesting. And he's like, what? You never read John Byrne's Iron Man. You got to read that. So I went ahead and bought that. Uh, next I've got the giant size X-Men oversized hardcover. Uh, 40th anniversary. So this is released for the 40th anniversary of Giant Size X-Men uh, number one. Of course, this is the book that I'm going to set it down so I can actually open it and show off some stuff inside it. That, of course, is the issue that spawned the new era, the all-new, all-different X-Men, where Len Wein introduced us to a bunch of the new characters on the team. They introduced us to Nightcrawler and Colossus and Storm and Thunderbird. Uh, some characters returned who were previously featured in the X-Men, like Sunfire and Banshee. And then, of course, we get Wolverine, who's in the background here, surprising, because he's usually in the foreground. Um who was originally in the issues of Incredible Hulk before appearing in um, Giant Size X-Men. So anyway, this started the whole Claremont era of the series. Um, after Giant Size number one started Chris Claremont's like 17 year run on the series. Anyway, it has a bunch of cool stuff inside. There's also a digital code with this volume, which is pretty neat. Um, so there's a lot of material in here, a lot of different issues. It collects Giant Size number one, the backup feature from Classic X-Men number one, which I was just talking about earlier, Giant Size X-Men number three and four. I think number two was actually reprint, which is why that's not in here. Um, X-Men Origins, uh, it collects the Wolverine and Colossus issues of X-Men Origins, some material from X-Men Gold number one, which was released like two or three years ago. Uh, Deadly Genesis, number one through six by Ed Brubaker, which is really the main reason why I wanted to buy this book. And then some issues of What If. Um, so yeah, just get right into it. And it's got the stuff from Uncanny X-Men, a lot of different material from a lot of different artists and writers, as I mentioned going through all that stuff. And there's a ton of cool back matter in here, a lot of cool stuff in the back. So as an X-Men fan, I think that this is way way worth the price of admission. The cover price is $40. I think it's worth the $40, but even more so, this is cool, it's like a cover gallery of everything that was like an homage to Giant Size number one. But anyway, um, you know, I got it for much less by ordering it online, but I think it's totally worth the $40 cover price because there's so much cool stuff in here. The cover is awesome. Uh, the work in here is awesome. So many cool stories, so much awesome stuff. It's just a really great looking book. I'm really excited to have this. The next book that I grabbed is from, uh, from InStock Trades was Lock and Key. This is the Master Edition Volume 1. Uh, this collects the first two storylines of the six storyline series. So that said, there, we should be seeing, um, obviously, three of these Master Edition hardcovers. It is an oversized hardcover edition uh, by Joe Hill, who is the son of horror writer Stephen King. Um, I've been told to read this by so many people, and I just, I've just i been putting it off because I was waiting for a nice edition like this. And when it was announced, I was like, okay, now I will finally be able to get and read Lock and Key. I've been waiting for this, and awesome. But so many people have recommended it to me. But first and foremost, my uh, 
my best friend uh, Kevin who passed last year just want to show off the binding here because I know some people were curious about how the binding was going to look um, get a good focus on here but uh, my friend Kevin passed at the end of last year and I, I mentioned that in a video and how that affected me and the fact that you know he was a huge comic fan and we would talk about comics all the time and stuff and I don't know why this isn't focusing it's getting really annoying um, yeah, we would always talk about comics, and he would give me recommendations, I would give him recommendations. And Lock and Key was one series that he would always recommend to me, and I would tell him, like, I'm going to wait until it ends, and after it ends, I'll read it. And then it ended, and he's like, dude, it ended, you have to read it now. And I was like, well, I want to wait until they have a new collection of it. Um, unfortunately, he passed before this collection came out, so now I can't, like, call him up and tell him that I finally got it, and that I'm going to read it. Um... You know, which it really sucks, um, but I have it, and I'm so happy to have it and have it on my shelf because it's like a, a little constant memory. Every time I see it, I'm going to think about him and just how much he loved the series because it, it, it's really a testament to the kind of person he was, you know, just full of energy and love and just, um, you know, I, I miss him so much and it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to read this and just think about how happy he would be if we were finally able to talk about it together. Um, sorry to bring you guys down if that was a bummer or anything. I don't mean to be like a bummer, but just wanted to talk about that. Anyway, um, then the last thing I got is something that I'm really, really excited about. This is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the IDW collection, volume one, oversized hardcover edition. This book had been solicited so long ago and it's just like jumped around on the calendar it got delayed multiple times finally it's out finally we have it um i think it actually got pushed back to july so it jumped up to the last week of may randomly and i'm so excited to finally have it i love the new idw tmnt series and this is a really great looking book um the cover is of Raphael. all the idw collections they always the cover image is a different character on each volume. So like the Transformers ones, it'd be like Optimus and Megatron and Starscream and all the different stuff. And then uh, the G.I. Joe ones have the same like single character. So now they're doing the Teenage, mm, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ones and they start with Raphael and they're probably gonna do the rest of the Turtle, Splinter, Shredder, maybe Casey, April, I don't know. Um, this volume particularly collects issues 1 through 12, so that's the first year worth of issues for the series, and it also collects uh, some of the different issues outside of the main series. There's the uh, the micro series, the Raphael issue, the Michelangelo issue, uh, the Leonardo issue, the Splinter issue, the Donatello issue. So there's a lot of different stuff in here, a lot of cool material, which is really cool. It looks like it collects not just that year worth of issues from the main series, but a year worth of issues from like everything that IDW was publishing, Turtle related, for that first year. So I'm really excited to finally have this volume. I love the series. I just, you know, I've been waiting for this book to come out for so long. And I'm just really happy that it's finally in my hands, and it's a really great looking book that really does the series justice. And just to look at the binding here, um, there's not much uh, gutter loss at all, so it's really easy to read. Honestly, this is just a really beautiful looking book that I highly recommend, especially for fans of TMNT. If you haven't read the series yet and you're a TMNT fan, I really recommend it. And this is a really great looking book. Uh, so anyway, that's all that I have for today. That was a lot actually, so hopefully I can trim this video down and not make it terribly long. It's usually my wife that does the editing, but that's up to me for now. Um, anyway, thanks so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out my site at www.theomnibuscollector.com. Uh, let me know what you thought about this video and the books that I have in here, if you have any comments or whatever about anything. Um, and as always, just you know, take it easy and we'll see you guys next time.